Aloha. Welcome. This is Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. We're filming live from downtown Honolulu in a Pioneer Plaza in the very high-tech studios of ThinkTech Hawaii. This uh, show is being broadcast live on Livestream.com. You can go to ThinkTechHawaii.com and find out all the different schedules that they have for the different shows during the week. We're here every Thursday at 2 o'clock, uh, and we uh, talk about positive stories in Hawaii about business, the business success stories. Today we have one here from Kauai, from the island of Kauai, and it is Sandy, the Kauai Pie Lady. Welcome, Sandy. Thank you, Reg. All right, it's great to have you here. Now, one of our regular viewers uh, introduced us, I guess, uh, a few months ago, uh, Dr. Lucille Miller, yeah, and she was kind enough to even take me out to your shop. So you've known Lucy for a while? I have. Lucy's been so supportive of us for years, Very definitely. Good. Very good. And you've got a, a pretty successful business going on out there. But before we get into that, can we uh, spend just a few minutes and talk a little bit about your background and, and where you're from and how you ended up on Kauai? Sure, absolutely. I actually grew up in Wisconsin. So I'm a Wisconsin girl mm -hmm. and I had been... That's cold country. It is cold country, I know. They're having a warm spell this winter though, so it's been oh. 60. They don't know what to do with that weather. <laughs> They're probably having accidents all over the place. They are. They are. They're looking at the grass instead of the road. <laughs> Very good. So Wisconsin, and, and you went to school there, high school, and, and you lived there for a while. And what brought you uh, to Hawaii? Well, I had been here a few times on vacation, and the last time I was here was in 2009, and I really had a hard time figuring out why I was going back to Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> So I decided to um, take a chance and move to Kauai and see what happens. So was that the first time you've been to Kauai? Or were you mostly on Oahu and then just visited Kauai? Or? I actually, Kauai I had been that time and a previous trip and I had been on the Big Island. So I hadn't actually been to Oahu um, until recently. So you, you know the country part of Hawaii then? That's, I do. That's good. Small town, that's what we like. What did you find so interesting about Kauai? Well, of course the weather, you know, it's 50 degrees warmer than Wisconsin, so you can't beat that. Um, I think that Kauai really drew me in um, because they're, it's kind of the same as Wisconsin. It's small town, everybody knows each other, everybody helps each other out. It's not big city life, that's not me. I'm kind of a small town girl. So it was just Wisconsin, but warmer. Well, it's a, a warm Wisconsin. Yes. <laughs> I guess it is very green, it's mountainous, there's a lot of water. Yeah. You know, I guess, uh, and, and I think at certain times in Wisconsin, people generally get out and do a lot of things that are outside, a pretty active, outdoors type of environment, isn't it? Definitely. Our two or three months of summer, we squeeze in as much as we can. <laughs> right. And that's, that's not that different from Kauai, except you can do that all year round. I know. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's perfect. What kind of, do you have any particular sports? Something that you can share with the audience that maybe well. they don't know about you yet? There is not a whole lot of athletic ability in me, so I love to read, I love to go to the beach, I love to swim, I love to be in the water. I will hike occasionally, but nothing too strenuous. I like to relax when I'm not working. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I like to relax when I am working. So. <laughs> I need to figure that out. <laughs> um, what, how did you end up getting into the business that you're in now? I mean, the, your, your background, your education, I mean, you know, you, you went to high school in Wisconsin, um, and then you came, so you finished high school over there, and then you came to Kauai, or, or to Hawaii? And no, I've only actually been here a few years. Um, I, I went to high school, and I'll never forget, but I took my first entrepreneurship class in high school. Very good. And um, the thing I always remember about that class is the first presentation that we did, we had to present to the teacher like we were presenting a business, and we went through the whole presentation, and we never told him the name of our business. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> so that was kind of my first introduction to business. But I actually went to school for culinary arts. So right after high school, I did two years for culinary arts, and then I got into the food service business. I quickly realized that it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. um, food service is a challenge. A lot of people in food service are there for a job. They're not there for a career. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit challenging to work with staff that um, has a negative attitude or, oh, I'm only going to be here for a few months, and to see that turnover and to deal with the kind of negativity that can come along with that. So I actually got out of culinary. I didn't do food service for quite a while. I got into sales. 
So I, I was in sales. What yeah. kind of sales? I did direct sales. So like home party sort of things, direct sales, direct to customer. Um, I did that for seven years and um, I loved it. I was with a company called Stampin' Up and I worked my way up there and I really enjoyed it. And when I decided to move here, I kind of fell back into culinary. Um, when I came to Kauai, I needed a job. So I quickly got a job my first week. I got a little job in a cafe and I was cooking lunch and that's where the pie started. I started making mm -hmm. apple pie there and pretty soon we started branching out to other flavors. And so you were doing this off. for somebody else at that time? I was, yep. I worked in a little cafe for a, a short time and that's where the pie kind of started and everybody loved it. Oh, we can't get good pies. Nobody makes good pies anymore. So that's when the new flavors started coming in. We started with the tropical flavors, mm -hmm. which was really fun because there's not a lot of pie recipes out there for tropical flavors. Now, where was this business? Is it On the west side of Kauai. The west side? Yeah, okay. yep, yeah. So I started there and I was only there a few months and the job didn't work out and I could see that it, it wasn't going to work out. So um, I kind of made the decision, I'm going to make pie. <laughs> Nobody makes mm -hmm. pie, I'm going to make pie. What do they say? Um, see a need, fill a need. That's right. Right? Yes. Yep. So yes. that's what I did. Yep. Very I thought good. I'm going to live in Hawaii and I'm going to make pie and I'm going to be happy. <laughs> Very and that's good. how it started. Yeah. Very good. And so you, um, you, you left this uh, employment and then you just, what, jump right into it and just started it? I did. It. Wow. I did. I did. It was just all or none. See what happens. Um, I shared a kitchen, so I worked with uh, a small company called Anahola Granola. And she was nice enough to rent her kitchen to me in the evenings. Mm. So they made granola during the day. I made pie at night. I sold at the farmer's market and the art nights around the island. And it just took off. So at that point, you didn't really have a physical location. You were just kind of mobile. Yes, definitely. Yep, I only did community events. That's all I was going to do. I thought, oh, I'll do the community events, and maybe I'll do some wholesale. And that'll be perfect. I can do it alone. I can do my own thing. Um, that didn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> really quickly I needed help mm. so it was a good problem to have so yeah. business took off and you needed to have somebody help you meet the demand yes definitely yeah. and yep. I guess you know trying to wear all those hats during the day and, and I guess cooking at night and, and doing the pies and selling them and doing this at, during the daytime and how many days a week oh we were doing six days a week there before we actually opened our first retail store so six months in, um, I hired my first employee, and it kind of was really an eye-opener for me as far as what do I want from this business, where do I want this business to go? Because when I started, I wasn't planning to have retail, I was not planning to have employees. Well, what was your plan? Just a wholesale to restaurants? and Exactly. Yep. I thought I'd wholesale, I can supply pies for restaurants for desserts, we could maybe do a little bit of corporate gifting, and sell at the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. That was my plan. Mm -hmm. And as most plans go, it, it kind of deviated a little bit. It did, bit. definitely. We're now over here, and we were going here. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So, you, um, so the culinary education that you had, that's kind of your comfort zone. And, and did you always plan on having this kind of business? Was that always your plan, or did you, uh, did you have other plans? I didn't really have a plan when I came here. I was not planning to start a business. I thought, I'm going to come here. I needed a change of scenery, something new. So give it a try, see what happens. If it doesn't work, I can always go back to Wisconsin, right? That's what I thought. Um, I was hooked. I can't imagine going back now. But culinary was kind of my, my fallback. When I moved here, you know, I had sales experience, but food service, you know, hospitality is big in Hawaii. So it was pretty easy for me to slip in and, and go back to where I began. Yeah. Now, culinary is a pretty big term. Was there any area in culinary that you focused on? I mean, obviously you're doing pies. But I mean, culinary, that education you had was probably pretty broad, wasn't it? It was, yep. The culinary programs are a little bit of everything to give you just a starting point to see what you like, to know a little bit of everything when you get into a career. Um, baking has always been my passion. Mm -hmm. I baked when I was a kid. I baked with my grandmas. Both my grandmas, um, we baked. So I always have memories of baking with them. But I loved baking. But I just couldn't justify right out of high school going to a baking program the baking programs were so much more expensive mm. than a culinary program. So I, I veered to the culinary. So there's actually different types of programs you can get into. So culinary would be one, but baking would be another. Exactly. Yep. You can specialize. So you can go to a baking program, which could be a two-year program as well, and you can learn 
a little bit of everything, but specifically baking. So you're gonna learn breads and pastries and cakes and decorating and a little bit of everything. Yeah. So in the, the culinary program you went through included that plus some extra. Exactly, so yeah. So you can make sauces and you exactly. can do all that. Exactly, yeah. I can make salads. And it kind of works now because we do the pot pies. So we kind of incorporated that savory in the sweet as well. Well, and you've been able to, I guess, in a sense, bring it all together, you know, uh, in what you're doing now is because you got, layman's term, you got the sweet pies and then you got the savory pies. So I kind of define it as being a guy that one is dinner and the other one is dessert. Or exactly. Or lunch and dessert or whatever. Right? One stop shopping. Done. Yeah. No, that's good. <laughs> that's good. So I guess, uh, has it been smooth going for you? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Business shouldn't be smooth, then it's too easy. Everybody would be doing it. So um, I think there's always bumps in the road. There's always detours in the road. Um, but that's what makes it interesting. That's what keeps you engaged. Um, if it was easy and simple, you'd get bored. I don't want to be bored. No, no. Boring is boring. Yes, definitely. So you, you've got the culinary background education, and then you had a few years of experience working in the industry. And so you've, you've got all of this going for you, but yet it was still a little bit of a challenge when you went out and tried to do this on your own. Uh, and I think that's important for a lot of people to know is, is, you know, the audience should understand that there are challenges, you know, regardless of how much experience and background uh, and education you have, that you gotta be flexible. Definitely, you have to. You mentioned you were gonna go this way and you end up going that way. I mean, yeah. you gotta react to the marketplace and you got you gotta be, I guess aware enough, engaged enough to know when that's necessary. I mean, was it obvious to you that you had to change direction or? Not right away. Um, I had a plan, you know, we were gonna do wholesale, but 2009, the economy was a little iffy and uh, restaurants weren't willing to give us a chance. They didn't wanna try something new. So they were sticking with what they knew. You know, everybody was watching their pennies. So I started doing the markets and the farmer's markets took off and the art nights took off. Uh, but we just couldn't quite get our foothold in that wholesale market. We had a couple of accounts, but nothing big. So I kind of had to take a step back and think, okay, what are we gonna do? So that's when we started growing. So I started with two community events a week. And before we opened our first retail store, I was up to six events a week. Wow. Yeah. In addition to everything else. Exactly, yep, baking the pot. How many people did you have? At that time, just before we opened the retail store, I had two. Two. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So another uh, important point that people need to remember is that when you do have your own business, you're going to be wearing a lot of different hats, doing a lot of different things at different times of the day yes. and night. You're always thinking. There's always something to be done. That's right. Yep. No, that's, uh, that's good experience. Uh, and. Sometimes being that engaged, you kind of get caught up in the forest and uh, the trees a little bit. And you you got to be able to step back occasionally and look at the big picture. And it sounds like you've been able to do that. Yeah, I think you have to do that. And you have to remember to do that. It's so easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day and the running of the business, whatever business it is. That it's important to kind of take that pause and step back and evaluate. Mm -hmm. And there's always those little branches. Kind of catch your breath a little bit. and. Maybe hit the beach. And right? We forget <laughs> what that is when we own a business. Oh, yeah, the beach. There's a reason I moved here. <laughs> That's right. Well, and, you know, for people in Hawaii, you know, um, you know, that environment is a big part of why I think we're all here, is that we enjoy that. We enjoy the sun, and we enjoy the, the beach, and we enjoy the, the lifestyle that it creates. Definitely. And so, you know, sometimes you got to work and, and make that all happen for yourself. Yep, Very definitely. Good. Well, we're going to go on a short break right here, um, and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more specifically about the company okay. and how it all works. So this is uh, Reg Baker. This is Business in Hawaii. Uh, we're talking with the Kauai Pie Lady, and we'll be right back in about 30 seconds. Aloha. Please join the Hawaii Farmers Series every Thursday on ThinkTech. We live stream from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And we are... Uh, Matthew Johnson and Justine Spiritu as your hosts. And the purpose of the Hawaii Farmers Series is to get to know our local agriculture community a lot more, get their backgrounds, get their history, um, find out why they love what they do, as well as get some of their insights and insights into hearing about the future of agriculture in Hawaii. 
So we're going to bring the experts on, but we'd also like you to be a part of the conversation. So you can always join us by tweeting in your questions and comment at Think Tech High. So we hope to engage with you. Thanks. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker, and I'm talking with the pie lady from Kauai, Sandy. Sandy, it's good to have you. Uh, we, we just heard a little bit about your background, your history, all, all the education you've had in the culinary industry and the experience you had doing it. Uh, and then you went into the business and you just kind of hit the ground running, but there was a few bumps in the road. So, um, you know, why don't you share with us a little bit about the business and how it, it, it exists today, maybe a little history on how it grew and, you know, where did it all start? Okay. Well, it started with Pi and Everyone in Kauai was telling us they can't get good pie, there's nowhere to get pie. And I think that pie is a comfort food. Mm. So in 2009, when I started the business, we all needed some comfort. The economy right? wasn't doing very well. Yes, yes. So pie was a simple, you know, a, a little piece of pie oh, that brings back memories. We get a lot of that, stories and memories. I remember when grandma made pie or when we were making my pie with my mom. We hear a lot of that. I guess we all have our image of what our favorite pie is. Definitely. And the memories that it invokes, you yeah. know, remembering your, your family and your friends. Yeah. So that was kind of how it started. And I thought, oh, I'm going to make pie and, and live in Kauai and, and see what happens. So I started in 09 and um, didn't take long and I needed help. So about six months in, that was when That's I a good hired. Sign. Yeah, yeah. I was really surprised. I didn't expect that. I didn't start the right slice thinking, okay, I'm going to hire staff and we're going to grow and we're going to explode. I just was going to make pie. So a detour, so we changed paths and I really had to think hard then what I wanted to do. If I was gonna have employees, what did that mean to me? What did that mean to the business? So I kind of had to make the choice, do I stay where I'm at and cut back a little bit and stay alone and do my own thing or do we take this step, bring on staff? Um, so That gets complicated. When you start does. hiring people, it gets a lot more complicated. There's a lot more moving parts to the, the company. Definitely, definitely. It's a lot to keep track of. It's a lot to learn as you go. I did a lot of learning as I go when I started the business. But it was important to me that if I was going to have staff, that I wanted to take care of them. Mm -hmm. So I put this plan in place. You know, what are we going to do? You know, we have to pay them as well as we can. You know, are we going to have benefits? Are we going to have insurance, vacation? Um, retirement, that sort of thing. So I had a little bit of an idea already then. Well, and sometimes you need to offer that in order to keep them around. You know, you want to reduce the turnover and you don't have to keep retraining people. You, you make them happy and they stick around. Now, you've had some employees with you for a little while now. I have. I've got um, several employees that have been with me five years and we've only been in business for six. So that says a lot. That's very positive. That's a good thing. It is. It is. Yeah. So you've yeah. got you've got these good people now, and and you've got the one location, the original one. And where is that? The original location? Well, the original location was in Puhi, and we started that a year and a half after I started the business. I was sharing the kitchen with Anahola Granola, and they were growing mm -hmm. really quickly, and we were growing, and it was hard to coordinate our timing because we were waiting. I'd stand there in the corner and watch the granola guy, and are you done yet? <laughs> so I knew I had to find my own spot, so I looked for about a year, and it was really a challenge to find a commercial kitchen. Mm -hmm. But we started in Puhi, so we moved into this industrial area, all these warehouses around us, and we're, we're going to make a pie shop, see what happens. So we went from two employees to five, almost overnight. Wow, double. We, yeah, we had a store, and we had a bakery, and we were going to be open seven days a week, so we really had to increase the staff really quickly. Um, so, so that was a major step for us. and. Um, I think I've been to that. I mean, I think the parking lot at one point was a dirt, dirt gravel parking lot. You had an outdoor seating area, and yeah, no, yes. I remember yep. that. Big yeah. rainbow shower tree in the yard. That's, yeah. Yep, yep. That's right. I remember. That's where we started. We were there for four years. Yeah. And so that, that is a, a very great. industrial area, and people still sought you out, and, and you had a good business there. They did. They did. You had to know about us. You weren't not going to stumble across the right slice. Not at all. You had to find us. You had to get your GPS out. You had to ask the neighbors. Yeah. So it was fun. It was fun to see our regulars that come to the farmer's market take the effort to find our retail store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Matter of fact, that was a store that uh, Dr. Miller and Muffin took me to yes. you know, and introduced me to the, uh, the pies. Yes. Yeah. Lucy's good. been fantastic. Yep, and her favorite slim and meringue. So if anybody needs to know that, keep that in your <laughs> right. little storage any, there. Any Christmas gifts for uh, Lucy? It's lemon meringue pie. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, and little biscuits for for muffin. Oh, of course. Yeah, can't forget muffin. 
Um, mm -hmm. How long was it before you could open up your second location? Well, we really were debating if that was what we wanted to do. I had some really great staff, and then we always have a little turnover. So um, it was all timing. I think um, I kind of always wanted to veer back towards the west side. I live on the south side. A lot of my staff lives on that side of the island. And um, I was drawn to Kalaheo from day one, but there was never anything available. So mm -hmm. kind of watched the retail, it's the commercial. It's not a big town. It's not. It's not. It's pretty small, but it's very community oriented. It's, mm -hmm. it's a nice mm -hmm. community. So when some spaces started to open up there, it kind of opened my eyes and um, the right fit opened up for us. So we well, just jumped on it. You've got a perfect location. It's a high traffic area right there at the intersection. Yeah, so. we love it. We're right on the highway. We've got great big windows in the front of the store. So it's really nice for us. And the kitchen is huge. The building's actually three times as big as our oh. former kitchen. So you got some capacity there. Yes, yes. We're ready to grow and we were able to spread out. The staff loves it. We've got way more space than we did before. So it's really nice, yeah. Very good. Yeah. So now you've got two locations going, and yeah. you're still doing some events during the week as well? We are. We still do three events every week, sometimes four. Um, Hunter Peppy Art Night was day one for me. That's the first night in business. That was the first place I set up. Mm -hmm. So we still do that one. We're there every Friday night. And then we do the Waipaw Market on the North Shore on Tuesday afternoons and Kukuyula Culinary Market on Wednesdays. Yeah. So if there were people on Kauai or even people visiting maybe from Wisconsin that wanted to experience your pie, where could they go to find where all these places are that you're at? So everything's on our, on our website, rightslice.com, and we have two Facebook page, pages, so it's kind of nice. You can go to the Right Slice on Facebook and see our menu for the store in Lihui, or you can go to the Right Slice Kalaheo and see the menu for the store out there in mm -hmm. Kalaheo. Okay, and that website name again is? Rightslice.com. Rightslice.com. You got All it. All right. And then there's a calendar where you're at, and, uh, and, and people can just drive out and get the pies. Exactly. Maybe even take some home with them. Right. We can box them. You can carry them on the plane. It's so nice. Yeah. You don't have to eat airplane food. We can bake you a little pot pie and there you go. take it right on the plane. Yep. Now, that, that raises it. Let's talk about the menu a little bit because, okay. it, it, it's as I mentioned, there's, there's the dinner pies and then there are the meal pies, and then there's the dessert pies. So... Uh, tell us about, you know, a little bit of both. What, okay. How do you do all of this? It's been a growing experience, definitely. First thing was sweet pies. That's all we had when I started. We did sweet pies in a large glass dish. We only sold them by the slice. Mm -hmm. uh, it was important for me. I didn't want a bunch of rubbish going in the landfill, so we used the glass dishes so we could reuse them, so we so didn't have tins. very environmentally friendly. Then. We try, yeah, definitely. Um, everybody wanted to take whole pies home, though, and, well, who wants to take this whole huge pie that I'm going to eat it all, right? So then we started with the baby pies, so they're half the size. Mm -hmm. Those go in a tin, but now we can recycle those tins here in Kauai, so that's nice. Um, and then when we moved into the Puhi store, that's when we started savory. So we didn't have any savory until we opened our first retail store. Okay, and tell us a little bit about the savory pies. On the screen is a little example of, of what some of these pie crusts look like. Now, are these sweet pies here? Those are our baby pies, so you can see if you look closely, they're not perfect. We make these by hand. So we actually wow. mix our dough in a bowl about this big by hand. We make six pieces of dough at a time. Now, who is that? <laughs> That's me. That's in the um, Unholy Granola Bakery. So that was when we first started. I love it. Look at that. See all the bowls? That's all of the dough. Yeah, that's all made by hand. Yep. Fresh ingredients and, and all of that, huh? Definitely, yep. And we still make everything by hand. There's all the girls. We're going to fill everything up. Very good. I love it. And uh, which one of those are still with you? So Marla on the end, opposite of me, she's still with me. She has been with me over five years. Marla, we call her the dough queen. Oh. She is my main dough girl, and she does a fantastic job. So if you're having you, pie, you need a, a dough boy in there somewhere. Bills, Pillsbury dough boy know, or something. I know. I know. You know, we had a dough boy. The first employee we had, Corey, he was fantastic, and he was our little baker extraordinaire. And he flew the coop. He's on the mainland now, uh -huh. so we miss him. But we have a we have a um, what do we call him? Our pie angel right now. So we have Sully. He does our farmers markets. Oh, so okay. He's our pie guy. We call him the pie guy. The pie guy. Okay. <laughs> Not the dough boy. No, I don't know if he'd appreciate that. <laughs> All right, very good. And okay, so what are some of the flavors that you have in the meal or, or the side savory. of things? Not the savory side. Okay, okay, savory and sweet. Those are the two names. Exactly. Okay. So all of our savory are single serve. So we do them in six-inch small pies. Okay. 
We have four fresh flavors every day. So we always have chicken pot pie, and we always have shepherd's pie. The shepherd's is nice, we use local beef, and then we do a garlic mashed potato on top. Oh, so that one's really filling yeah, if you're yeah, super yeah, hungry. Yeah, yeah. It's a good one. And then we do a vegetarian and we do a special every day as well. So those are always gonna change. We've got about 30, 35 flavors of savory, and we put the menu on Facebook each morning for each store so that you know what we have before you walk in the door. Right. And those are all take and bake. So what we do is we literally will take the shell and we'll put the filling in and put the lid on and send it home with you with directions so you can bake it at home. Oh. If you want us to bake it, we can. You just give us a call an hour before you're going to come in and we'll literally take it out of the oven and put it on your plate. Wow. Yeah. So you can actually have these specifically ordered, you know, and waiting for you when you get there. Yes, definitely. Is, is there a lot of people that do that? There is. It's a great thing, especially in the summer when it's warm, you don't feel like cooking, you don't want to turn the oven on, give us a call and we'll do the baking for you. And a lot of the visitors, they're staying in hotels, they don't have an oven. You know, I was just going to ask about that. I mean, for the people, the visitors that are staying in the hotels and maybe they want to order out and are getting tired of the pizza, I mean, could they call you and is there a way to get it to them or do they have to come down and pick it up? Um, we usually have them pick it up. We can deliver. We actually do quite a bit of delivery during the holidays. We do deliveries for special occasions, that sort of thing. Um, the nice thing with the Lihui shop is we actually moved it from the Puhi Industrial Park over near the Marriott um, this last summer. So now they can walk. So anyone that stays there at the Marriott in Lihui can just walk across the street, wow. an easy dinner. So you're not in the industrial dirt parking area anymore. No, uh, no, we're kind of growing up, so. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you, yeah. And it's great, we love it because the Marriott has been so supportive. We've got some great gals over there in the concierge desks and they're always sending us people. So it's nice now that their people can get a homemade meal, not fast food, all they have to do is walk across the street. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Very good. Uh, and so you've got the two, you got any other plans for other opportunities? We have plans. You know, there's always something in the works back there, always thinking about something. We definitely would love to see a right slice location on the North Shore. Um, we do the North Shore Farmers Market every Tuesday afternoon and we have a big following. And when following. you say North Shore, you mean on Kauai? Yes. Yeah, okay. we're not coming here. Sorry. I was going to say, you're going to get to North Shore in Oahu excited. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Don't get your hopes up. We never know. You never know what's going to happen, but um, we want to make sure that we take care of our, our Kauai base first. That's where we started and that's always going to be number one for me. I want to make sure that you know our, our customers and our employees and our business there on Kauai is number one. Right. And there's always other steps we can take too. Well, I read on your website that you actually had shipped a pie to the mainland. Yes. That was something I never expected. We actually had customers very early on, before we even had a retail store, oh, I want to take pie home with us. Can we take this pie home? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Nobody ever asked me that before. So I actually went to the UPS store at our mall, and I'm like, okay, here's the deal. Somebody wants to ship this pie. And they're like, what? So the UPS store actually helped me out. They made a little shipping container. They packed it all up. So now we ship pies every week. We ship pies to the mainland. Wow. Yep, and the UPS store does all the work for us. I make the pie, I freeze it, and I drop it off, and they pack okay, it up so for it me. so it is frozen. Yes, it's frozen. Okay. So we bake it and freeze it the same day. So it's super fresh. And then when it arrives, they can either eat it or they can stick it in the freezer and save it for a special occasion. Yeah, and that's both the sweet pies and the savory pies. Well, we don't ship the savory pies. We have shipped them. It wouldn't taste them. the same, would it? You know, we sell them frozen in the store. Mm -hmm. We actually, because our regulars didn't want chicken and they don't want shepherds, they want the African fire pork or the seafood gumbo. Wait, wait the, the what? African fire pork? Yes, it's so good. Yeah. This comes from Africa? No, it comes from our kitchen, but it's got purple sweet potatoes and a nice tomato sauce with peppers and a little bit of peanuts. Oh, it's so good. Wow. It's so good. But we wanted to have a variety, right? So now we have a freezer case in both stores. So now there's 15 to 20 flavors a day you can choose from. Wow. So we do sell them frozen, and when you um, take them home, you can keep one in the freezer. So we have a lot of regulars, they love to come in and stock up the freezer, so they'll come and get a dozen, and they'll take them home, especially our North Shore people, because they don't want to drive all the way to Lihui. Well, we yeah, don't like to well, drive that far. When my wife sends me out to shop, I usually just go right to the frozen food section and you know pick up what I need, and that's dinner for the next two weeks. Yep, keep it simple. Yeah. Yep. So that's what we do. So we've got frozen and we've got fresh, and we have shipped a couple of frozen savory pies for the diehard customers that it was really important for them to have the savory. So we have done it, but it's just, it's not an inexpensive gift. Mm. So we don't um, focus a lot on that, but a lot of the sweets we send out. Okay. If somebody wanted to order something, would that be possible on the 
website? Definitely. Yep. We have a shopping cart right on their web website. So rightslice.com. They can go to the ordering page. Everything you can order is there. So you know what we can ship and what we cannot ship. Let's um, take a quick break. We're going to come back and talk a little bit more about your website. Uh, and we'll uh, continue on and, and talk more about some of the other opportunities that you're looking at. Uh, this is Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. Uh, we're talking with the Pi Lady from Kauai, uh, Sandy, and she has got a very fascinating story. Uh, we're going to take a, a, about a 30 to 60 second break, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Hi, aloha. My name is Chris Leatham, and I have host a show called The Economy and You. Uh, the show plays every Wednesday at noon. And on my show, I bring on guests who are interested or working in the technology space. And uh, so I'd like you to come and watch the show and learn with me about all the sort of exciting things that we're doing in Hawaii to build and grow our economy ecosystem. So I'd like to say aloha, and I look forward to seeing you on the show. Thank you. Aloha. My name is Kaui Lucas. I am the host of Hawaii is My Mainland here every Friday on Think Tech Hawaii at 3 p.m. I invite people who are doing interesting and inspiring things in our community to help us keep it local and keep it real. Tune in any Friday, 3 p.m. and also available on our YouTube channel and my blog, kauilucas.com, Hawaii is my mainland. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii, and we're talking with the, the pie lady from Kauai, and she has got a, an incredible menu of both sweet pies and savory pies, some of which you can order online. So we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, what's available on the website that you have. And I, I, I've got short memory problems. What, what's the name of that website again? Rightslice.com Right is our website. Rightslice.com. All right. Um, so what's, what's on there? What's on your website? Well, we have a little blog. We don't update it a lot. A lot of hats, you said, right? The blog hat is a little bit on the side. But we do try to keep everyone up to date, what's new, what's going on. Holidays right now, so we've got our holiday schedule, our ordering schedule, that sort of thing. Is this a seasonal business? Do you get special orders during this time of the year? Definitely. We always have special orders, but Thanksgiving and Christmas is huge. So we, um, we actually have to cut off the special orders for these two days oh. because we have so many that we can't keep it all straight. <laughs> so we cut it off, we figure out our plan, and we go to town. So What's we, the most popular pies that are ordered? during Christmas and Thanksgiving? Well, mango lily koi is our most popular pie that we make. So we do a lot of that one. I think Thanksgiving we get a lot of apple. We do a little bit of a spin on pumpkin crunch for mm -hmm. our locals. So we do a traditional pumpkin pie. That's my grandma's recipe. And we do a little sweet, salty, crunchy topping for it. So that one is super popular for Thanksgiving. Christmas coming up, my favorite pie of all time is the cranberry walnut pudding. Ooh. It's so good. It's kind of like a coffee cake in a pie shell with fresh cranberries and brown sugar and roasted walnuts. It's so good. I've been making that since I lived in Wisconsin. Uh -huh. So that's a favorite for me. So we do a lot of that one for, for Christmas. And we have an eggnog pie. Eggnog pie? It's kind of a little hidden treasure that not a lot of people know about. We only make it for a few weeks, Thanksgiving to Is Christmas. Is it like a custard type of It's like a cream pie, thing? like a nice mm. fluffy, you know, kind of like um, a chiffon. Oh, okay. But eggnog and yeah. loaded with eggnog flavor. Mm. So good. Now, my, my doctor has told me that I need to eat more dark fruit. So blueberry pie is one of my staples that I try to focus on. Do you have blueberry pie? We do. We have a couple different flavors. The most popular is our blueberry pina colada. <laughs> we try to do something local in every pie, right? There's a, there's a blueberry pie right there. Oh, uh, there it is. Wow. Yep. Uh, okay, I'm ready. That's the one. I think I can probably get a prescription for that. Right? Uh. We'll set you up. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So that's our most popular. Um, we try to do something local in all of our pies. So even our apple pie, which we can't get local apples, we use local lemon juice. It's something mm -hmm. small, but it's important for us. We try to do something local in everything we make. As much local ingredients as you can find. Yep, yep, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Very good. So you've got the seasonal pies that you, that you take care of. And are you getting close to the point where you're going to have to start cutting off uh, the orders? We are. We have two more days. Saturday is the last day. So, so that's it for right. Christmas orders. So if somebody wants to get their order in, they better get it in now. Right. Yeah, yeah. don't wait. Because come Saturday, we turn that ordering off. And me and my baker get together and 
figure out our plan. All right, very good. <laughs> well, sounds exciting. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, but you've also got a, a variety of other pies. What is the most unusual pie that you have? Hmm, unusual. Well, it depends on if you are thinking unusual for a local or unusual for a visitor. The visitors love the tropical pies, the blueberry mm. pina colada, the mango lily koi. We do a lily koi cheesecake, which is phenomenal, and I normally am not a cheesecake fan. Wait a minute, you're from Wisconsin and you don't like cheesecake? I know, I know, I don't. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I know. I don't like sweet. I'm not real super sweet kind of a person, so I really like something that's a little bit more tangy. So the island lemon is my favorite. It's nice and tart. We only use local Meyer lemons. So lemons are in season right now, so we're buying them by the bucket full. Mm. So we'll get 50, 100, 200 pounds of lemons in, and our prep people are in the back zesting them and juicing them, getting them ready. Yeah, right. So it sounds like a very busy time of the year for you. It is, it is. But we love it. It goes so fast. It's hard to believe it's the middle of December already. It is. Well, what, just another week and it's Christmas. I know, I know. Yeah, so, yeah, you're, you're going to have a busy few days ahead of you here. Definitely, definitely. Right? So then you take the rest of the year off, right? I wish, I wish. <laughs> ah, we do take the weekend off, though, so we, um, our staff needs to recover, right? We work so hard. This is the first year for Thanksgiving that we worked overnight. Really? So we had to bake overnight just to make sure we could get everybody's orders so done. Was that a record year for you then? It is, yep. Yeah. It was the busiest Thanksgiving we've had. Wow. So so we're done. Thanksgiving Day we close. We don't reopen until the following Monday. And mm -hmm. we're lucky the holiday falls for Christmas. Same thing, so we're going to close for the holiday So weekend. the same kind of cycle for Christmas too? It is, yeah. yeah. We, it's interesting because Christmas has actually grown to be very near Thanksgiving for us. So it, we're seeing a lot more people ordering pies for Christmas. I see that word of mouth is getting out. I mean, do you do a lot of advertising, or is it all pretty much word of mouth? Almost everything has been word of mouth. We do a teeny tiny little bit of advertising. Um, we don't do a lot, but word of mouth has been huge for us. I can't believe the support that we've had. The local community, you know, telling their friends, oh, it's totally worth it. you got to try it. It's so ono. Oh and then the visitors that come, and they come every year, mm. and they check, and they search us out. What's new? What's going on? So it's really neat to see that support that we've had. That's very good. That's um, and, and the business community. I mean, I, I know we talked a little bit. I mean, you were a member of the Kauai Chamber, and and you know, and then you kind of got so busy that it just became difficult to to keep that relationship. Um, but I know that the the business community through the Kauai Chamber also gets very involved in a lot of things too. Um, you know, I'm not sure that you could handle a whole lot more business, though. It sounds like you're pretty much pushing the envelope right now. It is. It's challenging to keep up, and I never expected that. But we've grown so fast the last five years, we really have been kind of holding on and just trying to keep our heads above water. And it's not some, a problem that you see very often in new business. Well, but it didn't come immediately. No. I mean, th this is the result of, what, seven, eight years of effort? Well, Six years, October, six. we are six years in business. Six yeah. years. So yeah. it, it, it takes you, time. You worked hard and, and oh, you're yeah. finally getting to the point where you can kind of take a deep breath and, and be proud of what you've done. Yeah, last year was a big step for us opening the second store and um, it was a big risk for us. So we're kind of still, I think, settling in to that situation and learning to balance both stores and to balance the new customers we have now being a part of a community in Kalaheo versus the industrial park in Puhi is kind of a whole change of scenery for us. And we love that. I really, it was important for me to be a part of a community. So we're happy to be there, but we're still kind of figuring things out yeah, and, and fixing the bugs and, and working that route and making sure we're on the right and track. And that's a process that'll probably never stop. I mean, you gotta be nimble and you gotta react to the market and, and do what the customers want or expect. You know, so it's not, you can't just set the model and walk away and have it run no. by itself. Never, never. It always detours you around. You never know what timing's going to bring. Yep. You've got you've to be on top of it. You've got to pay you attention. Do. You do. Yeah. What has been your biggest challenge? Well, our biggest challenge is definitely employees. Um, we have some great employees, don't get me wrong. When I can say I've had employees with me four or five years for a small business that's only been that's open phenomenal. for six, that's great. That's, that's great. Yeah, it's filling in the gaps in between, finding a really good employee. Um, the work ethic is not always fantastic, so sometimes we have a hard time getting people to show up for an interview, mm. much less to show up for work. 
Well, I, it's, that's not an uncommon problem. A lot of companies experience that, not only here, but also on the mainland. It's just, Definitely. you know, it's difficult to find good quality people that are able to come right in and make that transition and jump right in and, and start contributing right away. It, uh, it just takes, you have to be very selective and you have to put some time and effort into training. And sometimes it takes a while before that training is over and that person's actually producing. Definitely, definitely. And we have such a huge menu, it's a lot to learn, and we're very particular. You know, we have that really high standard of quality and of service, so we make sure that everybody that we bring in can reach that standard, and that's, that's more important to me than having a huge staff and having mediocre. We want to we do the best we can. So even you, you have a relatively small business um, that's successful, but you, you have set standards and, and you expect yourself and everybody in the company to live up to those standards. So having a structured environment is uh, maybe one of those ingredients of success that companies need to embrace. I think so. I think you have to always be involved. I think it's really hard, especially for a small business. Like you said, you can't set it up and walk away. There's always something changing, something going on. And I think the, the difficult thing is to maintain the standards that you set in the beginning, especially if you're not there. And I'll even notice that if I'm gone for a few days, I'll come back and I'm like, okay, we're going to tweak this thing, go back around to where we started. And I think being hands-on has been really important for me. I think my customers see that. They see me there all the time. And you know, they look for me and they know that if, if there's something going on, they can talk to me about it. You have to be involved. So getting that feedback from the employees and the customers Definitely. is important to keep tweaking uh, and making those little improvements. But, do you have other advisors that you rely on that help you with the business? I do. I do. I have some really great advisors that have been so helpful to me, just bouncing ideas off of uh, people that have run businesses not even similar to mine, but just using their business expertise. Mm -hmm. And um, I use John at the SBDC all the time. He's my sounding board, and he keeps me in line. And um, he's been really helpful making sure that I get my ducks in a row and I get my paperwork done and my business plan done. So if there was somebody that was interested in, in starting a business, um, the SBDC, the Small Business Development Corporation, would be a place that you would recommend that they go visit? Definitely, definitely. I can't believe how much help they have been for me. You know, I had the business kind of figured out in my mind and I was on that track already before I went into the SBDC. but. Um, just the research that they were able to do for me and the help getting the taxes and the employees, all of the things you have to do for employees, making sure I had, had all my ducks in a row before I started, before I got myself in trouble well, there's, because there's I didn't. There's a long checklist. As we talked earlier, once you yes. bring on your first employee, it gets a whole lot more complicated. Oh, there's a lot does. of things you have to have in place. Definitely, definitely. Really? And I think you need help. You can't do it alone. You have to have help. So you have to have somebody you can rely on. Well, and that's that's one of the themes that I try to get out to the audience is that, you know, when you decide to go this route, you know, make sure you've got a good support group around you that can help you through the process because that's invaluable. Definitely, definitely. And communication is so important. Even if I have a little question, I'll throw it out there and I'm like, oh, I never thought of it that way. It just kind of opens your eyes to a different perspective sometimes. And you need that. You do, you do. You need to be a step back and, and take a look at things and, uh, yeah, and maybe, you know, make some minor little shifts here and there and some of it is trial and error. I mean, sometimes you make the tweak and it doesn't always work the way you expected it to. So yeah, you got to be able to, yeah, exactly. Yes. And you got to be nimble and, and you can't let pride stand in the way. No, no. There's always something to be done and I think, you know, you can never be above doing any job if you're a business owner. It all needs to be done. We've got about 30 seconds left. Do you have any final words of wisdom or advice, a takeaway for the audience? Well, you know, business is not easy, but um, I can't imagine doing anything else and just be prepared to work hard and to work long hours, but the benefit is definitely worth it. That's right. So it's, it's all worth it in the end. Definitely. Very good. Well, Sandy, it was a pleasure to have you today. Um, I wish we could have more time to chat. Uh, that means we'll have to have a part two at some point. Perfect. But <laughs> thank you for being here. Uh, and this is Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. Uh, we air every Thursday at 2 o'clock. Uh, please join us next week. Uh, actually, next week is going to be Christmas, so I think we might take that day off. So we'll see you next year. Aloha. Look, he did it.